Hello everybody, this is Tekka. In this video, what we're doing is checking out this mini PC right here. This is the Minisform XA1 series, and oh boy, out of any mini PC I have ever used, this thing is a beast. And not only is it a beast in performance, look how big this thing is. My golly gee. I have a, a couple other mini PCs here just to compare it to. This one from Geekom is also pretty good. Ooh my. This is slightly older Intel Nook here. It's about the same size as my M1 Mac Mini. And you can see there the size and thickness of this thing. I barely want to call it a mini PC. This right here is the smallest one I got. Actually, a, another Menace form. My goodness graciousness. So I've been using this XA1 Pro side by side with my uh, Mac Mini here, the M4 Mac Mini. And when it comes to performance, they are pretty on par. For the specifications of this guy, it has a AMD Ryzen AI9 HX370, and within the CPU of this thing, it does have a NPU. These are kind of relatively new, so actually utilizing it and testing it was an effort, but I did find a way to do so, which we will talk about that in just a little bit after I run over some more of these specs. This one specifically shipped with 64 gigabytes of RAM. This right here is the purchase page. You can see it could go up to 96 gigabytes. Here is kind of some more of the specs. We have the MPU, CPU, and GPU all on one chip. It's Zen 5 architecture, 12 cores, 24 threads. Oh boy, with a max frequency of 5.180 tops total for the entire system. So this is definitely performant. And if you do want to get more performance out of it, they have a uh, o OQ link, I think. That port right there, that is specifically for attaching a external GPU. It's uh, very similar to Thunderbolt, but a different plug. Additionally, you saw there on the back, we have dual gigabit LAN and HDMI display port, USB-A, and then a USB-4 on the back, Kingston lock, and a bio reset. On the front, we have two more USB-As, USB-4, our uh, auxiliary, and then there are two buttons there. The button right here is power, and this one is a co-pilot button. Personally, I am never ever going to use that, but I did test and it is remappable on both Windows and Linux, so you could program it to do whatever you would like it to do. It does come with a stand, it's a screwless stand, so if you don't want it taking up a whole dinner plate's worth of space on your desk, you just slide this in, actually, this side. There we go, nice little standing machine. And I put it on this part because there is actually a little uh, SD card slot here, which has been very handy. And then here on the top, there is a little fingerprint reader, which works with uh, Windows Hello. I personally haven't tested this on Linux, but I don't see why it wouldn't work. Beautiful thing is the power right here. It does not need an external brick. The actual power supply is integrated into the unit. Now I would take it apart and do a teardown, but I am an idiot and I stripped one of the screws. So you're gonna have to take my word for some of this. Inside it does have dual stereo speakers, which do sound okay. It's better than not having any speakers at all. At least it's an option. And in here you can install up to three NVMe SSDs at four terabytes each. So technically you could have up to 12 terabytes in your system if you'd like to. This one did ship with just a single one terabyte, which for me works out pretty good. But because that this is AMD and you could put your uh, actual system drive on it and then two four terabytes, mirror those and then run this as a little high power kind of AI server, which, speaking of AI, I'll talk about the MPU real quick. I did run a variety of tests, not doing the proper steps to utilize the MPU, still saw really good performance in things like Olama, running DeepSeek, it was fairly on par with this M1 Mac Mini, but there is a bunch of steps that you could take to actually utilize the MPU. Again, they're new, so there's a lot of things you have to do to get around it. First, you have to install a whole bunch of dependencies, and then you install the actual special uh, AMD AI drivers. And then from there, you could use a tool called Gaia, which is specially made by AMD to test and utilize the MPU, and actually running it kind of side by side with the uh, non-MPU dependent version of that, it is significantly faster using the MPU. I mean, it blazes through, but it's still not perfect yet. A lot of the prompts that I would give it after it would kind of rush through, it would cut off. I'm not sure exactly what's going on. Again, it's new, it's testing software, but I, just based on that testing, I'm really looking forward to seeing how the use of these MPUs develop. 
and when more models and things start actually utilizing properly, we're going to see really good performance out of something like this instead of having to buy a whole like super high powered GPU. And then as MPUs get more and more powerful, it's it's just something to look forward to, even though I'm not personally one that uses AI a whole bunch. So how is this machine just as a normal everyday computer? It's super powerful. I do have some Geekbench results. On Linux, this thing scored a 3052 for the single core score and 15,917 for the multi-core score which I think out of anything I've tested is the highest score that I've ever gotten. So even if you go into like heavier workloads such as video editing, I ran a DaVinci Resolve and edited a couple videos on it. I didn't notice any major lags, stutters. It rendered out like uh, fusion compositions pretty well. Not quite to the same level as the Mac, but it can definitely edit. I was think I was doing 2K, so 1440p video can edit that just fine. And then going over to something like gaming, at first when I started doing this, I loaded up a Cyberpunk and I didn't go into like any of the BIOS, I didn't mess with any settings, and it was not performing well. I was getting like 20, 30 frames per second at a 1080p low, but then I was like, it should be better than this. So I jumped into the BIOS and that is where you can like dedicate some VRAM. Do note when you dedicate RAM here, it does take away from your total system memory. So if you have a lot of RAM, doesn't matter. Default is two gigs. I upped it to eight and then 16. Anything after 16 was kind of diminishing returns. Didn't make much of a difference. So you can see on screen now, some of the games that I played, most of them did really well running in like the uh, 50s for some of the higher end titles like a Call of Duty, Cyberpunk. And then when I got to some games that aren't as resource intensive, such as like Splitgate, War Thunder, it was running in the 70s, 80s, and then I played Fortnite and that did pretty good. I switched it over to Direct uh, DirectX 12 and that again was hovering in like the 60s. So it, it was a good experience for 1080p gaming. This thing is really all you need if you want to up it. Of course, you could plug in a dedicated GPU. Now, I do briefly want to talk about Linux on this machine. Most of my testing, as you've seen in this video, has obviously been done on Windows. And the reason why I'm so late to making this is because I wanted to actually properly test it on Linux. But it wasn't until the, I think it's the 6.14 kernel update that it properly supported these newer Ryzen chips with the MPUs and all that. Before that kernel update, when I was testing Linux, I would get these weird kind of display issues if I was running like multi-monitors. After like 10 minutes, one of them would turn green. Maybe the other would kind of have artifacting. It was weird. When I updated the kernel though, it was fine for the most part. I did occasionally have some display crashing here and there but it was a much more usable experience after that kernel update. Support for actually using the MPU on Windows alone is sparse. On Linux, I couldn't really find any applicable use cases to test it in that environment. Granted, AMD does have drivers for it and all that, which is pretty cool, but if you know any use cases where I could actually really test AI on Linux for this thing, please, please, please let me know down below. So I've had this machine for a while. I've been using it like half time as one of my primary computers and it has been a phenomenal experience. Minus Form always comes out with good stuff. It's probably one of my favorite micro mini computer brands. I mean, you just saw this thing. This is another older kind of Ryzen CPU. They have that tablet, which is a beast of a machine. If you're interested in checking that out, I'll put a video down below. But if you are interested in seeing this more, please let me know in the comments. I'm thinking about throwing like Steam OS on this and kind of testing it in that regard. I think this would be a pretty good like Steam machine console. And then I might try to like hook up a DAS or like a direct attached storage to it and see if I could use it as a really high power NAS. I forgot how much does this thing cost? That's the real deal breaker here. It is a thousand dollars. Which that, honestly, kind of the price point I expected for this thing. It's very comparable in performance to, again, the M4 Mac, but a lot of people hate them. It's cheaper, probably one of the best values in general when it comes to any computer purchases ever. But then again, this thing only has like 200 gigs of memory, 14 gigs of RAM, so... If you started upgrading it to match the specs on this, it's probably going to be more expensive. So if you're interested in checking this out for yourself, I'll go ahead and post a link down below. And with all that, I do hope you have an absolutely beautiful day and goodbye.